Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome child rights activist and 2014 Nobel Peace Prize laureate, Kailash Satyarthi. Dear sisters and brothers, it's my pleasure and honor to be here this evening. I feel very empowered and encouraged to see the champions, the women who are shaping our world a better world. I always say that when a girl is born, God smiles and gives an evidence that she is here. Wanted to make sure that his creation will continue. When a girl's, when a girl picks up a pencil and start writing on paper, the power of a million guns weakened by that. When a one, once a girl goes to school, the whole world open up. Today, the great champions for the cause of women, for the cause of humanity, who are being awarded here are sources of inspirations to the whole world. But let me tell you that we live in a world. I work in freeing child slaves for the last 35 years. And I know girls are sold and bought like animals and sometimes in lesser prices than the animals. But when we start reading the news from Syria, that a girl or a group of girls are made hostages, and five, six, seven-year-old girl is sold for sex slavery in lesser price than a cigarette pack. My head hangs down in shame. I feel angry about it. Almost 60% of illiterate women and girls in the world are looking at us. They started knowing the power of education, but the entire world has to respond to it and bringing them to schools, ensuring education and literacy for them. Dear friends, I know about Va, Kawa. She has been a fighter for many, many years. She is an activist and a strategist. She is an entrepreneur. And above all, she is a great humanitarian. She is fighting for democracy for many, many years. She stood against all odds and violence in her country. And I have a great, great respect for her. She, I know the society in Cameroon where the girls are still enslaved, boys are also. They are forced to work. They are victims of trafficking. And as you know, the trafficking of children and women has become the biggest, most illicit trade. $150 billion are being earned every year out of buying and selling of young boys and girls and women. Cameroon is a place where it is not easy to survive and champion the causes of children and women and youth. She is also a youth icon. And with all my respect and pride, I uh, invite her, and uh, she is going to receive the award in a few minutes.
Uh, where is she? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Africa is one of the world's great paradoxes. We produce 13% of global energy, and yet less than 40% of Africans have access to electricity. We are that land of smiling, laughing people, and yet one out of every four of our children is undernourished. We have some of the world's fastest growing economies, yet 50% of Africans live in extreme poverty. The reasons? Bad governance, corruption, poor management, and more. A small group of people at the very top of our governments live amazing lives, buying for themselves the best healthcare, education, jewels, and cars in the world, while their citizens live in abject poverty. This is as perplexing for most Africans as it is for you. We come from a centuries-old tradition of shared responsibility, collective decision-making, where power, true power, is the power of the community. The road we have taken to get to this paradox is long and winding, with colonialism, truncated democracy, and gross abuse of power along the way. We could spread blame for decades, but it is the decades to come that are of great interest. Africa today stands at the crossroads of possibility. Yes, we have the possibility to invent a different future for ourselves and for the world. We can ally our traditions, which put human beings at the very center of all development, with modern science and technology to solve daily problems. Africa has the possibility to use governance, economic growth, education, to build communities where health, extraordinary human rights, and quality of life is given to all citizens. So who will stand up? Who will face violence and repression? Who will dare to run towards fear in order to invent a different future for Africa? I am here to tell you, we are standing up. I am standing up alongside millions of Africans to reclaim and rebuild our collective power. We are standing up for Africa. We are standing up for our world. With Vital Voices, we made this video to remind us all of the collective power of Africans that has crossed generations. I have a story. Tell me the story. I have a story. Tell me the story. I have a story. Tell me the story. There once was a young girl called Natvela. She was very independent. When she was alive, 
Grandmother Eshe taught Nabula that life would not always come to her. So, one day, she went for a long walk to see what she could see. She saw the big tree. She saw the river. She saw a tall man made of old things. She saw a small garden for baby plants. She saw that these things were the accomplishments of her ancestors and that they had been entrusted to her. She saw people carrying water and men building a house. She saw people selling coconuts and a car that was stuck in the road. She walked and she walked. She saw more things, but these things made her pause. There were people who could not find work. People who had no place to sleep. Schools where it was difficult to learn. And rivers full of waste. It was then that Navilla felt small and alone. She felt powerless, so she called out to her ancestors, how can we solve these problems? In the wind, she heard Grandmother Eshe. People have always faced challenges. We who have passed cannot solve them for you. But the answer is in front of your eyes. Do you see how Itundi helps Ibrahim lift the water onto his head? Do you see how Kanga, Fru, Tonye, and Oben help to rescue the stranded car? Do you see how the house is built? Not by one person alone, but by many men working together, each of them doing his special part. And then Navula understood the answer is us. The answer is you and me. The solutions in life will not always come to us, but to face any challenge, we must choose to stand. We must walk together. So we are standing to educate our citizens on their rights and empowering them to confront dictatorship, corruption, violence, and ignorance. We are standing to build communities where women, alongside men, take leadership, take decisions to build healthy communities. In my country, Cameroon, we are standing to say no more to over 30 years of bad governance and poverty, and to say yes to reaching our full outstanding potential as a nation. We ask you to stand too. Do not accept a double standard for Africa. Injustice, abuse of human rights, and corruption is no one's culture, not yours and not mine. Stand up and support grassroots leadership. Provide knowledge, finance, technology to the Africans who are standing up. Let us stand together for Africa and for our world. For her personal integrity and her commitment to democracy and social justice, Vital Voices is proud to present a 2015 Global Leadership Award to Ka Huala.